Blockchains are used mainly in digital currency, and how could any currency be without a bank? In today's video, Kranti Shaik is going to tell you different cases for blockchains in banks, or should I say, how blockchains are used in banks. Without any further delay, let's get to the topic. Hi there guys, you're watching Kranti Shaik, where we talk about related news and updates, along with many technical tips and tricks. Today, let's show you the different ways and methods in which blockchains are used in banks. As we all know, banks are one of the most targeted institutions. Some people will always look for any chance to try fraud in banks. Now, would you be surprised if I told you that banks can actually stop fraud from happening? Do you want to know more? Basically, now that nearly all payments are digital, from one small payment to huge transactions that are made in seconds, blockchains are something that can help banks to stop almost every kind of bank fraud. Blockchains can eliminate the risk of fraud in all areas of banking. Along with banks, this could equally apply to a trading platform. Furthermore, Issues like operational risk and administrative costs can be made transparent and immutable with blockchain. Let's see some of the real true cases of blockchain in banking. Reduction of fraud. For a long time, bank ledgers have been created within a centralized database. Due to a centralized database, this model has become more prone to attacks from hackers and cyber attacks. This is because all the information is located in one place. Moreover, because this centralized database is located in an outdated IT system, it makes it easier for the new generation of hackers and cyber attackers who are usually secured behind outdated legacy IT systems. However, when we talk about blockchains to resolve this issue, it makes it more secure from this type of fraud. By using blockchain, there would not only be real-time execution of payments, but also complete transparency, which would enable real-time fraud analysis and prevention. Therefore, by independent miners, blockchain is checked at every step of a transaction, with all data being open and publicly available. During the transaction, because of blockchain, there is a real-time analysis and verification of every bit of data and all information. Nevertheless, banks must consider that blockchain doesn't yet eliminate all types of fraud. In August 2016, nearly 120,000 units of digital currency Bitcoin worth about 72 million US dollars, was stolen from the exchange platform Bitfinex in Hong Kong. Know your customer. KYC, know your customer requests, currently can cause delays to bank transactions, typically taking 30 to 50 days to complete to a satisfactory level. Current KYC processes also entail substantial duplication of effort between banks and other third-party institutions. While annual compliance costs are high, there are also large penalties for failing to follow KYC guidelines properly. According to a recent Thomson Reuters survey on KYC compliance, the average expense spent by banks is £40 million a year. This also revealed that some banks spend up to £300 million annually on KYC compliance, anti-money laundering, AML checks, and customer due diligence, CDD. KYC statements can be stored on the blockchain, which was proposed by Chris Hulls of Rabobank. Once a bank has KYC'd a new customer, they can then put that statement, including a summary of the KYC documents, on blockchain, which can then be used by other banks and other accredited organizations, such as insurers, car rental firms, loan providers, etc., etc., without the need to ask the customer to start the KYC process all over again. Because of this, organizations will know that the customer's ID documents have been independently checked and verified. Also, they won't need to carry out their KYC checks, reducing their administrative burdens and costs. This will also minimize the duplication of error, as the data stored on blockchain is irreversible. It will provide a single source of truth. Trading Platforms On blockchain protocol, a bank could set up a new trading platform or move across an existing trading platform without centralized trusts or intermediaries and without the risk of double spending the blockchain technology offers a new medium to exchange assets. In practice, a corresponding digital token is issued by a trusted central authority, which acts to authenticate the product's point of origin when a high-value item is first created. Then, every time the product is bought and sold, 
The digital token is moved in parallel so that a real-world chain of ownership is created and mirrored by the blockchain history of that digital token. The digital token is acting as a virtual certificate of authenticity. This makes it far harder to steal or forge than a piece of paper. The final recipient of the product will then be able to verify the chain of custody back to the point of creation upon receiving the digital token. Payments The existing payment system has always gone through banks and central banks. This is a process that was first put into place in the 1970s and 1980s. Blockchain could also help banks to operate continuously, apart from speeding up money transfers 24 hours a day. Customers who want an omnichannel banking experience at any time, day or night, this is what they expect. To make payments in real time globally, blockchain can be a great solution. Along with this, the blockchains also offer real-time execution, complete transparency, real-time fraud analysis and prevention, and also at a reasonable cost. Being a proprietary blockchain network that cannot yet connect with other systems, this is the only issue with Ripple at the moment. These were some of the most important cases by which we came to know how blockchain works in banking. Hopefully this video helped you to understand the usage of blockchains in banking. Well, that's all for today's video. If you found it helpful and valuable, then leave us a like. Also, you can comment below if you've got any questions, query or suggestions. I'll be sure to reply to your comment. If you've watched this video to the end, then please don't forget to subscribe and also share this informational video with people who you think should know this piece of information. That's all from Kranthi Shaikh. See you guys in the next video.